Thanks, Tiki. You're awesome. Let's give a big round of applause. Thank you, mate. Wow. How you doing, everyone? I'm a bit nervous today um, because it's a hard act to follow after last Sunday night's preaching. And uh, Michaela Soper just tore it up. And uh, so, uh, so yeah, so sometimes, you know, so I'm feeling a bit intimidated, but I'll do my best. And uh, praise God. It's uh, wonderful to see you all. Thanks for all coming out. And uh, also, too, I want to introduce you. My dad's here tonight. And uh, just down the back, if I seen you down the back, Dad, give him a wave. And uh, that's him down there. And uh, he's popped along here for the week, uh, which is really cool. And so I'm sure you'll see him next Sunday as well. And say day. He's a very nice person and uh, loves having a chat. If you've got your Bibles, tell me the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 103. Psalm 103. I need to apologise uh, this morning it was advertised that I was preaching a series called Tough Texts of the Bible, and um, I'm actually not. Um, so I apologise for that, and um, I'm actually uh, going to do that in the mornings uh, in next term, uh, in the morning services. And so I'd forgotten that I had at once communicated that I was going to do that at night. So I've changed that, but it's okay. Uh, you'll, you'll survive. Psalm 103 says this. says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Forgives all your iniquities, heals all your diseases. Redeems your life from destruction and crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for word. I just ask and pray that you help us to live the life you've got for us. I thank you and praise you for the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, a few weeks ago in the morning service, I preached on Psalm 103 and talked about membership has its benefits. Right here, it actually says there's benefits to being a Christian. He says, praise the Lord on my soul, forget not all his benefits. So what that means is there's benefits to being a Christian. You're better off by being one. In fact, you miss out by not being one. And so it talks about all the different benefits that we have as a result of being a Christian. Right at the bottom there, he says that your, new, your youth will be renewed like the eagles. So what that means is one of the promises that God has for us is that our youth will be renewed like the eagles. That's not talking about our physical bodies. The Apostle Paul says that our outward man is perishing, but it's talking about our heart. It's talking about our attitude. It says that it says because he says that our inward man is being renewed day by day. So God wants us to be people who have a youthful faith. He wants us to be people who have a youthful passion for him. God doesn't want us to shrivel up or dry up in our faith. He acts us want to be as on fire for God at the age of 80 as we were at the age of 18. He wants us to be people who have a youthful vitality and a youthful passion and enthusiasm for the things of God. He wants us to do that, but it says our youth is renewed like the eagles. There are some, uh, there are some eagles that actually renew their youth that actually what they do is that sometimes that they pluck out their own feathers and remove some of their plumage and sometimes they break their beaks. And the reason why they do that is because sometimes there can, can be diseases that get in, there on, get in there and in order to get rid of it, they actually have to break it off. And when they do, eventually it grows back and they get revitalised and they become stronger than they were before. So when it says that you renew your youth like the eagles, what that means is that there are times we have to break off some of the things that will bring decay to our heart that we have to break off and snap some of the things that would just destroy our faith, to remove our passion, to fill us with disappointment. There are things that we need to actively do to remove and break off some of the things that will rob us of our joy and our passion for God. And so whenever I preach to you over the next couple few weeks, uh, we're going to have different speakers next week. We're going to have Robin Stevenson, a great friend of ours. Uh, she's a, uh, she's her, and her, pa uh, her and her husband, Sanjay, who's one of my best friends, they've planted a church in Mumbai, India, and uh, she is a little pocket rocket, and so she's going to be coming out here preaching next Sunday night. She's going to be phenomenal, but and we're going to have a worship night coming up in a few weeks as well. We're going to call it Ignite Worship, a night of just purely worship. It's going to be great, but in the mix of that, sometimes when I'm preaching, I'm going to talk on the topic of forever young, and that means that things that we can do, that we can renew our youth and our passion and vitality. I'm amazed, actually, sometimes I bump into some young people and their passion's gone. Their passion for the things of God have gone. And you talk to them and sometimes something has got on the inside of them and started decaying them. 
and they need to actually break that off so that they can be free to be the passionate, youthful, innocent, uh, exuberant Christians that God has called every single one of us uh, to be. So I'm going to talk to you over the next few times when I talk to you about some things that we actually need to break off in order for us to remain spiritually vital and passionate for God. And today I want to talk to you about one of these things. And the topic I want to talk, and the, and the thing that I want to talk to you about briefly is about worry, worry. Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, Jesus said, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? So what that means is worry, anxiety, and stress are a decaying process. It actually removes our joy. It takes courage outside of us, and it, and it helps out, makes our passion ebb down. And one of the things as a Christian is that we need to be able to deal with worry. We need to be able to deal with anxiety and stress so it doesn't dilute, um, it doesn't dilute our passion for God. The number one way that we deal with it is through prayer. The Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 13, he said, if any of you, is any of you in trouble, then you should pray. So what that means is prayer is one of the ways that helps us to deal with the worries and the anxiety and the stress that can rob us of our passion for God, that can rob us of our joy. I want to talk to you today about how you should pray when you're worried. I want to talk to you about what the Scripture says we should do when we're worried, how we should actually pray. And the, ver and the passage I want to actually go to, and we've jumped around Scripture a fair bit tonight, is in Psalm 142. Psalm 142. And it's a, con and it's a psalm by David, and it's a prayer when he's actually in a cave. He's actually in a stressful situation. He's got people who actually want to kill him and take him down. And he's in the midst of this stressful situation. And here's a prayer that he actually says. And we're going to read that out. Psalm 142, verses 1 to 7. It says in verse 1, I cry out to the Lord with my voice. With my voice to the Lord, I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him. I, take, I declare before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then you knew my path <clears throat> in the way in which I walk. They have secretly set a snare for me. Look at my right hand and see, for there is no one who acknowledges me. Refuge has failed me. No one cares for my soul. I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise your name. The righteous shall surround me, for you shall deal bountifully with me. Here we can see a number of things, a number of things he does in his prayer to help him offload his anxiety and his worry and his stress and put it onto God. And that's what I want to talk to you tonight, uh, talk to you about tonight. A few things you should do when you're worried. Number one is this. He says in verse 2 of Psalm 142, he says, I pour out my complaint before him. I declare before him my trouble. The first thing you need to do when you're stressed out is pray and pour out your complaint to the Lord. It's amazing how we carry worries and stresses and we don't give them to God, but we dump them on other people. That we're worried and we're carrying all this stuff and we've got to blurt it out. Well, the first thing we should do is actually pour it out upon the Lord. The Bible says that we cast our cares onto Him because He cares for us. We're not actually meant to carry all that worry and stress. We can't do it. In fact, if you carry it for too long, it starts affecting you very, very badly. You know, it's interesting, you know, in how in our society that we have such high levels of depression, such high levels of stress and anxiety. And it's like, well, why is that? You know, we've pretty well got everything in this life. But the reality is life could be so complex. There's so many pressures and so many things. We're carrying all these things. And if we don't, if we continue to carry them, we're actually going to get crushed. One of the things we need to do in one of our daily disciplines is, there's no, is that we need to take this worry and this stress and we need to pour it out before the Lord. The thing I love about this is it says I can pour it out before God. When I was a young Christian, I thought that I lacked faith if I told God my problems. That somehow I've got to carry it and walk around with it all the time. But I learned a number of years ago that actually God can handle it. He's a big God. He can handle it better than other people. And rather than dumping it on other people, the first person I need to dump it on is actually dump it onto the Lord. Because he can actually take that away. I remember one time in my first year of ministry, I didn't understand this. Uh, this was nearly 20 years ago and was going through a difficult time in my ministry and, and I was carrying all this worry and this anxiety and, and, and I, I was just carrying it. I didn't know how to deal with it and, and I didn't want to pray about it. I felt like if I said it to God, it, well, I was being negative and that sort of thing. And I remember I actually went to a conference. It was here on the Gold Coast and it was at the church, uh, Dream Center Church. And, and, um, you know, and, and at the time, I think that was the largest conference 
uh, that's been held on the Gold Coast. Uh, it, was a go- it was a conference with a speaker by- with Dr. David Yongi Cho. And I remember just in the midst of it, he's talking about prayer. And he's saying how we can tell God things, that God can handle it. And, I, and then right there in that meeting, I just blurted. And I just dumped out all these things that I was worried about. I said, Lord, I'm worried about this. Why is this happening? Why is that happening? What was I, what was I doing? I was pouring out my complaint before the Lord. We are not supposed to carry it. There are some of you who hear you're carrying things and it's almost like you can hardly even speak because you're carrying it and it's worrying you and stressing out and you've got no one to put it upon. Can I tell you, you can give it to God, that you can take that thing, you can take that burden, we cast our cares and we put them onto Him. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication, make your request known to God. Whatever you're worried about, whatever you're stressed about, you can be honest with God and you can tell Him and you can pour out your complaint. You can take the burden of that thing that you are carrying and you can start dumping it and laying it upon the Lord. You know, that is why counsellors need counselling. I was talking to a counsellor recently and they said that when they counsel, they have to have a debriefing session themselves. That they have a counselling session with someone and then they themselves have a mentor that they have to debrief and dump it onto them. Why is it? Because we are not made to carry it ourselves. We're not supposed to carry it ourselves. Sometimes we think we're so strong, we can carry this worry and this anxiety. People aren't meant to carry that. That's why people are getting discouraged and depressed. We need to take what's burdening us and pour it out onto God. Who, maybe you're here tonight and you are carrying something and you're worried about it and stressed about it, but you've never actually poured it out onto God. Can I tell you, that's the best place that you can do it. He is saying, I pour out my complaint to the Lord. The second thing, Uh, that we should do is this. It says in Psalm 142 verse 5, he says, I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. The second thing that you need to do is, so when you're stressed and worried, the first thing you do is you pour out your complaint, but you don't leave it there. You don't just complain to God and then walk out. The next thing that we need to do is have a positive confession. What that means is we start declaring the goodness of God. So you take that worry and that stress that you've got, you pour it out before God, and then you don't just leave it there and walk off, then you start declaring His goodness. There are many verses in the Scripture that I just love declaring. One of my favourites is in Psalm 27. It said, I would have despaired unless I believed I'd see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You start declaring scriptures like that and confessing them over your life, you'll be amazed at how you go from having all this worrying, anxiety and stress, you put it onto God, but then all of a sudden your faith is lifted and you're lifted up and ready to go, uh, ready to go again. There's been many times when I've just been feeling low and down and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to take control of my mouth. And just started declaring God's goodness, declaring his promises over my life, declaring his promises over our family. There are times when you can have worries and things, um, you know, kind of, kind of crowd you in. Just like David who was living in a cave. It's almost like things are crowding in on him. But the way you beat back that negativity, the way you beat back that doubt and that unbelief is by declaring a positive confession. That's why it's good, I'm telling you, if it's good for us to spend time in God's word. Because when we spend time in God's Word and we get His Word on the inside of us, we've got things that we can speak and that we can declare to beat back the unbelief and the negativity. I spoke to you earlier at the start of the year. I did a message with you called It's Time to Declare. And how one of the habits is that we need to, start de- we need to declare promises from the Word of God. That when we spend time in God's Word, it's good to write them down and it's good to read it. But it's the next level to actually start declaring it with your mouth and start speaking it. There's been many times in my life where I've been, where I, in the past, where I was discouraged and I start declaring God's word and a promise from God's word has leapt off the page into my life. I told you earlier in the year about the time when I was, you know, a number of years ago, I was really feeling flat and really feeling low. And I just thought, you know what, I've just got to, you know, I've got to break out of this. And I just, start, and I was reading in the scripture how it talked about that joy was a fruit of the spirit. And so that means that's something I could have in my life. And I wasn't experiencing it. So I just started declaring it. I said, Lord, I thank you for your joy. 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 (laughs) I started giggling, started laughing. Within about two minutes, I just started laughing my head off and that heaviness had lifted off me. 
We need to spend time declaring the word of God and declaring having a positive confession from God's word. The second thing is that we need to have a positive confession. The next thing it says uh, in verse 6, he says, deliver me from my persecutors. Deliver me from my persecutors. So the third thing that we need to do when we pray and we're worried and stressed, the third thing is petition God. Petition God. Actually ask him for the thing you're wanting him to do. David isn't there and he just says, oh, look, you know, I've got all this happening and all this happening and this happening and God, I know you're great and then just leave it. He then says, but actually, God, this is what I want you to do. I want you to deliver me from my persecutors. And he actually petitioned him and asked him what he wanted him to do. There's been times in my life where I've had a list of things, a list of worries that I've had to deal with. And I've looked at them and they've become overwhelming. But then you get in a prayer and you say, Lord, I need you to do this in this situation. I'm believing you for this in this situation. I'm believing you for that. There's nothing wrong as part of your devotional life, as part of your time with God, actually asking him for things and petitioning him for things. Sometimes, I know some people that they're, they're, you know, the way they spend time with God is they don't actually ask for anything. They pray long, flowery prayers, but don't actually ask for anything. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I've told you before that I've been really bad at paintball. And a uh, number of years ago, I went and the staff... Uh, the church I was at, we used to, we went away and did a staff day and we played paintball. And um, basically, you know, you've got the paint pellets and you shoot each other and that sort of thing. And, and so I'm thinking to myself, you know, we're going to go and shoot guys and that, you know, but I realised I was actually really bad. I was a terrible shot. And then I was with my team and we were hiding in the bushes and we're trying to attack this flag. And as we, attach, as we were going to go attack this flag, one of the guys said, listen, what we'll do is this, we'll count to three and we'll attack them. And we'll chase them and we'll run, it, we'll run straight at the fort. So we thought, okay. And so they said, one, two, three. And we, I went, yes. And I went out there and I had my gun and went, boop, 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 boop. And I just shot off all these rounds at this fort. And then all of a sudden, out of the fort, boom, 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 all the, they all just started shooting me. I turned around. My team was actually hiding in the bushes. So they had set me up. So they had sent me out as like a suicide bomber. Um, <clears throat> And then they could see where everyone else's was in the fort. And they were laughing at me as I was walking past. And, and what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to go to another part of the field and there's another fort there and you ought to wait there a few minutes before you go back out in the fray. And I remember thinking to myself, well, at least I'm going to be able to, you know, I won't be here by myself. All those guys that I would have shot when I shot at the fort, like I nearly, you know, got rid of the whole round. I thought, you know, at least some of those guys will come and join me. And I went back to the fort and no one joined me because I didn't shoot anyone. I'd shot off a lot of rounds and didn't hit anyone. Some people pray like that. They shoot off a lot of rounds, never hit anything. Never actually ask for anything in particular. Never actually ask for something specific. As part of our Christian walk, it's important. It's okay to ask. There's no harm in asking. The Bible says, ask and you'll receive that your joy will be full. Don't be afraid or ashamed of asking God things. What is the thing that you're believing for, that you're wanting for your life, but you've never actually asked for? Don't be afraid to petition him and ask him for things to come into your life, especially when you're worried. If there are things that you need to change a situation, if there are things that you need in order to see a situation turn around, don't be afraid or ashamed to ask him. If you ask, then you'll receive, then your joy will be full. And the last thing is this, the last thing we should do, and um, I'm finishing a bit earlier on purpose, worship team, when you come. The last thing we should do is this, we should praise. We should praise. So the first thing is this, when you're worried and stressed, you pour out your complaint. You get it off you. The thing that you're worried about, you just, you know, you, you let it onto God. The second thing that we do is we have a positive confession. So what that means is we just start declaring God's goodness. The third thing is that we petition. We now ask God for the thing that we're believing for him to do. But then the last thing that we should do is this. We should praise him. The Bible says in Psalm 142 verse 7, he says, bring my soul out of prison that I may praise your name. This was written by David. He actually wasn't in prison. He said, my soul's in prison. All the worry, the anxiety and the stress was causing him to be crushed on the inside. 
He was shriveling up on the inside. He needed his youth renewed like the eagles. And so he says, God, get my soul out of prison. Get my soul out of this place of confinement that I might praise your name. You know, he's saying there that if these issues get dealt with, I'm going to be able to praise God. But you know what we also see in Psalm 103, that he also knows that sometimes you praise God in spite of your conditions. Because he says, bless the Lord, O my soul, all that was in me, all that is within me, bless his holy name. He's talking to himself. Come on, soul, praise God. You don't feel like it, but do it. And when you start praising him, even when you don't feel like it, you'll be amazed at how the heaviness lifts off you. The Bible says in Habakkuk, we put on the garment of praise in exchange for the spirit of heaviness. If you're feeling weighed down, if you're feeling like low and discouraged, then that's the best time to praise God. If you don't feel like it, that's okay. It's called a sacrifice of praise. And so what that means is that there are times we need to praise God so that we can bust out of this prison. I love the story of Paul and Silas in the New Testament. Paul and Silas have been serving God and they end up in prison. And then the midnight hour, the Bible said they decided to praise God. Could you imagine that? You're in prison, you're suffering because you're serving Jesus. I could imagine they'd be spending that time complaining and whinging. I don't even know if it's worth it serving God. Look what happened to us here. But they decided in the midnight hour, at the darkest time, that they were going to start praising God. And when they started praising God, all their chains started rattling. And the prison doors started rattling. And the roof started rattling. And they were actually set free and delivered and they were able to leave. The reason why they left is because, not because their praise busted them out, because their praise brought in God's presence and He busted them out. Amen. When you praise God, you invite Him into your situation. When you praise God, no matter what you're going through, He can bust your soul out of prison so that you can have the vitality, the passion, the vigour that you had when you were younger. Amen. And so what we're going to do is this. We're going to have a little bit of a praise time. You know, I was looking during the worship. It's pretty good. I mean, the guys were doing awesome. And um, I was looking around and I thought, man, there's like about 90% of our guys praising God, which is awesome. But the Bible says in Psalm 150 verse 6, it says, let everything has breath, praise the Lord doesn't say let 90%. And so what we're going to do is there's some people here, I just sense on the inside, on the inside, you're a bit shriveled up, discouraged, worried and anxious. And what we're going to do is praise Him. And as we praise Him, God's going to invade your situation. As we praise Him, He's going to fill your heart with life, joy and strength. And you're going to leave this place reinvigorated that your youth might be renewed like the eagles. Amen. So what I want you to do is stand to your feet We'll do a slow song first. Is that, can we do the last song? What was the last song? Come to the altar, yeah. We're going to sing Come to the Altar. And this is what I want you to do. Some of you don't lift hands in your worship. But if you don't, I want to encourage you to do it. The Bible says in Psalms, we will lift hands and praise the Lord. And when you do that, it's like you're letting go of your problems and you're surrendering to Him. You're lifting Him up. For some of you... When you lift your hands and worship God, you feel a bit embarrassed. But you don't need to feel embarrassed. Sometimes it's pride stopping us from doing that. It's an act of humility when we do that. And so as we worship God, I encourage you to open your, open your mouth, lift your voice, lift your hands, start worshipping Him. And for those here that might be carrying some things that are causing you to shrivel up on the inside, God's going to lift the weight and the burden of that off you so that you would have the strength and the vitality you need to continue soaring through the week. Amen. Lift your hands to heaven. Let's worship Him in this place.